Hello and welcome to Focus on the Arts. I am Paul Kreider, Dean of the College of Creative Arts at West Virginia University in Morgantown. Our show attempts to excite our audience about new and interesting arts events and practices occurring within the university in the state of West Virginia. This show serves to inform you about some of the wonderful creative arts programs at WVU. As we focus on the arts today, our two guests on the show are Gerald Haybarth, Associate Professor of Intermedia at WVU, and Michael Sherwin, who is an Assistant Professor of Photography also at WVU. They are here to share exciting aspects of photography and multimedia, multimedia programs in the College of Creative Arts. And uh, we thank you so much for, for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. We've got uh, some, some fun things. We're going to see some clips of some student work, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that, that Student work ranges from freshmen all the way up through That's graduate right. students. We'll see some, some beginning student work uh, all the way up to some senior work. Great, mm -hmm. great. So we'll see some, some faculty work as well. Michael, I think you have some things that you're showing. and yes. That'll be good. So we'll yeah. see some photos and we'll mix that in with the program today. So first of all, let's start with a question about the philosophy of the mm -hmm. intermediate program, mm -hmm. the philosophy of the photography program, and, and what are you trying to help students uh, you know, attain at this point? Well, you know, Mike and, Mike and I have separate uh, programs, so we have, um, to a certain degree, s different issues that we deal mm -hmm. with with uh, regard to our respective um, areas. His being photography and mine being multimedia mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the moving image and animation and so forth. Um, but there are certain principles that I think we feel really strongly about that we try to instill in our students and that we try to focus on in our curricula. Um, I think one of the most important ones is the idea of skills. Uh, I think we both feel really strongly that you know, even though we work in this multimedia world uh, and we're, we're using a lot of electronics and, and uh, advanced technologies, we still feel that we're, we're craftsmen and, and mm -hmm. we feel really important that mm -hmm. our students develop a sense of you know, mastering their craft. Yeah. Um, by the same token, we feel really strongly that, that our students need to be thinkers. Uh, and we, we take seriously this notion that we're uh, there in part to encourage students to become in independent thinkers mm -hmm. and to really stretch themselves in terms of their, their imaginative mm -hmm. abilities. Um, the other thing that I think you see reflected in, in both of our courses uh, and our classes generally is this idea of looking out uh, onto the contemporary world, the, the contemporary landscape, and trying to um, uh, create situations where students can think about and talk about and and uh, and deal with issues that mm -hmm. are of real concern uh, right. in the world, um, whether that uh, takes a political uh, kind of uh, perspective uh, or whether that um, involves uh, struggling with issues that sometimes are controversial um, uh, or whether it uh, involves thinking about technology and how technology impacts mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and is changing culture. Uh, we feel that, you know, as, as artists, we're, we're, our job is to respond to culture uh, and to be aware, therefore, of what's happening mm -hmm. in culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so this idea of um, making work that is relevant and about the real world is, is very important. Mm -hmm. I think uh, an another thing that, that we think is, is really critical um, is this idea of, of uh, having an interdisciplinary focus on yeah. uh, what we do as artists. I think we both recognize that, that the art world has changed a great deal in recent decades. Um, part uh, of that has been because of historical uh, changes and, and uh, influences in the mm -hmm. art world itself. Mm -hmm but also because of changes in, in culture, that mm -hmm. um, we live in a world where you can't be uh, very uh, narrow in terms mm -hmm. of your activities and your interests. So I think we both try to encourage and cultivate a sense of, of um, re reaching out or branching mm -hmm. out into different fields mm -hmm. and uh, areas of, of thought. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and we try to so, see that reflected in our so students' when you work. Say, when you say skills, development, and mastery, mm -hmm. Um, we're really talking about kind of two sets of skills. Talking about skills as an artist mm -hmm. and developing a vision mm -hmm. and a voice as an right. artist, and then also skills technical. on the computer, the technical skills mm -hmm. that are necessary to make it yeah. all happen. Yeah. So <clears throat> you're teaching both of those facets in these classes, is that correct? Yeah, and I would say that the, um, primarily the hands-on, hardcore technical skills happen at mm -hmm. the introductory level. So mm -hmm. we each teach 
you know, in the first year of the student studies in, you know, either photography or electronic media, they're going to take a sequence of courses that are very hands-on, um, mm -hmm. learning to use either the computer, the software, or their own camera. Um, and, and then after that, you know, they get to the intermediate level and, and the courses begin to integrate those techniques with more concept building. I mean, the concepts are always there from the beginning, but becomes mm -hmm. um, more important as they progress. And, and by mm -hmm. their final year in the program, the, the courses are, are, are much more independently driven. Um, so that they're really mm -hmm. kind of seeking and finding their own answers to questions and we are there as, mm -hmm. as a sort mm -hmm. of support. Mm -hmm. So going into something that we talked about earlier today, uh -huh. um, before they get to your courses, which are more you know, in-depth and focused on intermediate yeah. photography, um, in the early stages as a freshman art major, they come in and take a foundation set of courses yeah. mm -hmm. to develop other skills and perspectives and and talk about the importance of that as it as they develop into artists before they come into your your classes. Yeah, yeah. Well, well those beginning classes really focus on issues that uh, are not specific to any medium, um, right. and they're more about foundational issues. You know, mm -hmm. how do you how, what, what kinds of concerns are involved in making uh, an image, and what distinguishes a good image from an image that. Um, is, is, is weak in terms of its visual characteristics and qualities. Uh, and those issues are relevant to every artistic discipline. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think they're probably um, uh, a, a good, there's probably a good deal of, of overlap with even non-visual artistic uh, mm -hmm. disciplines. Music, for mm -hmm. example, in terms mm -hmm. of composition, how yeah. do you compose music? Uh, really, you're talking about relationships and um, being able to judge the quality and the character of relationships and how they come together to you know to to create meaning mm -hmm. or to suggest mm -hmm. uh, a message or some other content so and yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt but mm -hmm. I, and I think that there are some fundamental techniques that they need to learn that apply to no matter what medium you to go into it could be even mm -hmm. outside of the arts but you know, things about composition, color balance, perspective, line, balance, all of these things that are discussed in both 2D, 3D foundations, mm -hmm. and even mm -hmm. on into the drawing classes become, they're, they're, they're imperative to your studies as you continue. Right. Everybody has to take those. So that's part of the degree program, that if a student comes to WVU to study art as a yeah. major, graphic design as a major, or intermediate photography, they're taking these foundation courses to develop those skills, Absolutely. those perspectives, and, and, and they're very important. Yeah. Yeah. When students um, don't have those basic foundational kinds of, of skills, you notice it right away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they struggle. They struggle because um, they haven't done the groundwork, the footwork, mm -hmm. to get to the point where they can uh, manipulate the, the right. advanced media yeah. that we work with with competence. Right. And they're also exposed in these classes through slide lectures and presentations to a, a variety of contemporary artwork. Right. And, and, and a lot of that's going to be out of the field that they may end up in. You know, they may not see as much of that. So it starts at the foundation mm -hmm. there. So, yeah, this, the performer's analogy or the singer's uh, analogy would be uh, work on technique, technique. And you, mm -hmm. you have to have that. That's... If yeah. you just go right to the, the presentation, you're putting the cart before the horse if you don't right. have the technique. Absolutely. So it's the yeah. same kind of situation. Right? Yeah. Right. Excellent. Okay. So we have some, some clips of animation work that mm -hmm. students have done. Yeah. And we'll cut away to that. They're about four minutes long or so. Mm -hmm. and, and then we'll come back and talk about them a little bit. Okay. And uh, so we'll get a look at it. I think this first piece is actually from a freshman. It's um, I, I, I believe the first one uh, is a second year student. Oh, second year student. Okay. Um, and in this particular animation, she's uh, dealing with the issue of energy and, um, and uh, sustainability. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, we like to um, focus on issues uh, that are relevant and important in culture and society. So I think this one uh, starts off with uh, an animation that was in response to okay. the students thinking Well, we'll about take a energy. look at those.
is red and red becomes blue. And your mommy suddenly becomes your daddy. And everything looks like a giant cupcake. And you keep laughing and laughing and laughing. Nothing is ever quite the same, really. And after you finish laughing, it's time to turn into a frog yourself. It's very funny to be a frog. Jump all the time and everywhere. Do you want to play with me? Excellent work. I mean, there was a mixture of some yeah. first-year yeah. students and first-year animation, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. seniors. Yeah, there so was that. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. Yeah. Every year represented there. Mm -hmm. um, so, talk about some of the time involved in, in creating. So that that second piece we saw, um, and that was a second. That was a first-year animation the student. The second one was was a sophomore who has just come out of that. Come foundation out of foundations year. and is foundation taking their year. first animation course. Is doing their their first their first right. uh, semester in electronic media, and that was our second project. That just happened this semester. Um, so th this is a kid who's, who's never made an animation before in his life, and it's really quite remarkable what he did there. That project is about a 20 to 30 hour project mm -hmm. uh, uh, from start to finish. A very simple process where they are asked to uh, really basically go old school, as it were, mm -hmm. where you uh, create a visual situation and every time you make a change in order to create that animation, you photograph that. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that process, you've got, in this case, a, a little over a thousand pictures uh, wow. that you then put back mm -hmm. together into mm -hmm. an image sequence. And then uh, there's some additional editing that goes on uh, from that point forward mm -hmm. in terms of timing, speeding things up, slowing things down. Um, um, but, but yeah, just to get back to what we were saying before, uh, there are some things that you saw with regard to composition and with regard to positioning, with regard to even color, that, um, that, that directly benefit, I think, mm, from that sure. first year experience. Right. That's excellent. That's excellent. <coughs> so let's talk a little bit about you know, the process students go in photography mm -hmm. and they develop this work and utilize the, the equipment and whatnot and, and you know, talk about the facility yeah. and how, you, how all that helps them develop their, their abilities. Sure. Yeah, I think we have some student work as well in, in photography. And, um, what, one of my philosophies with the photography era is that we've seen this huge revolution with photography in the past 10, 15 years maybe um, with the onset of digital photography. Um, 
And because it was so enormously popular, what we saw was universities across the country were, including universities that I went to school at, were dropping their wet darkroom mm -hmm. programs and converting them to digital apps. But I always felt all along that we needed to embrace both the traditional and the digital, and that's always been my philosophy. And now what we've seen in the past maybe five years is we've seen a resurgence of these old processes, which are now quote unquote alternative processes. So um, in the photography program, starting from, from uh, you know, photo one, you're gonna learn how to use your camera hands-on. It's a 35 millimeter camera, not a digital camera. You're gonna learn how to process your own film in a dark room. Um, you're gonna learn how to print your own pictures, everything done by hand. And then you take what you learn in that class, that first class, to a digital class, and you apply those same principles uh, to what we call the digital darkroom um, and digital photography. Mm. So you learn how to use your digital SLR. Um, and, and we have all sorts of equipment that students can use, uh, you know, by the way. But uh, So you learn how to use the digital darkroom uh, and the software that's involved with that. Um, and then at the intermediate level, you get into alternative photography, which I'm teaching this semester, which is a very popular class and one of my favorite classes to teach. It's a, it's a very hands-on class, but um, it's a lot of fun. Students uh, even uh, make their own cameras. Uh, so they make <laughs> pinhole cameras. They experiment with uh, plastic toy cameras. Uh, they uh, learn how to create their own emulsion. Uh, we end up making, you know, mid-19th century hand-applied emulsion prints, including cyanotypes and Van Dykes. This semester we did albumin printing. Um, so we're talking about processes that are 150 to 170 years old and are just as popular now almost as they were then. Mm -hmm. There's been a resurgence because of digital and this sort of homogenous looking work, there's been a resurgence of these, this, these old mm -hmm. processes uh, because you can create these kind of one-of-a-kind unique images. So what's the main difference between a student who has the darkroom experience and a student who, who doesn't have, has not had the darkroom experience as they go right into digital photography manipulating the image? What, what, what do you see in those two different students? Oh, well, you know, I, I see that all the time. And there's this sense, I think, uh, amongst our student body these days that there's, they want this sort of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. um, and we live in an instant society. And what I've found in the film classes, and uh, you know, the majority of my students are, are graphic design majors. They're coming out of school with very little, if any, darkroom experience, because high schools especially are, are eliminating their darkrooms. But, what I've found in these, in this, in photo one, that, and the reason I've kept it a darkroom class is the students love it. They love extracting themselves from that media, unplugging in a way, mm -hmm. and really seeing how things break down, how things work. One of my students described to me just this semester how, um, how beautiful it was to see her hands underneath the enlarger, manipulating the light, you know, as it affected the print, so mm -hmm. she could control the density of the print with her hands and the light shining on them. And, and, and so that's those fundamental experiences that they carry on into digital and, and into that world. So describe a favorite project or assignment that, that you have that, that really you know, takes those students on a good trajectory to becoming an artist. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. um, gosh, there, there are so many. Um, <laughs> one, one project that, that uh, I do pretty regularly with, with the students is a uh, collaboration between myself and one of the other faculty, actually in the music area, um, who teaches electronic music composition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we do an exchange right. where they send uh, electronic music compositions to our students and we send them video works. Uh, and we take those, um, those musical arrangements and uh, put video to them, basically. Uh, and that project, I usually use it as an opportunity to look at the issue of abstraction. Uh, so we go back into early, early 20th century uh, artwork, not just in film and multimedia, but looking at paintings, looking at the whole idea of abstraction that, that, that uh, arose at the turn of the century, even looking at and talking about poetry, you know, T.S. Eliot, and what is he doing with, with words, and what are painters doing with images, and what do we do then as multimedia artists, you know, what, what are the roots of the material that we work with? Um, and it really, uh, I, I think, is an opportunity for students to think and look critically at their work and at the substance of, of, of their craft mm -hmm. and of their material. 
Um, so one of the things that I think that is characteristic about about the projects that I give, and I, I think uh, this is true of Michael's too, because I've had an opportunity to look at his assignment pages, mm -hmm. is that w we think of these as these projects as um, uh, places where all of these issues and concerns can kind of converge. Mm -hmm. History, theory, skills, the skill base that we talked about earlier, um, and concepts and bringing right. your own imaginative forces to bear. And so we, th we think of these as um, not single kinds of, uh, of goals uh, that each project presents, but uh, opportunities for this sort of multilateral, yeah. multi-layered kind of learning yeah. to take place. So this, give, give me an example of uh, what your students would do sort of extracurricularly or co-curricularly outside the classroom that helps you know, enforce, reinforce that, that learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, we, we, we have students who uh, have done some internships mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, I think we're kind of fortunate in Morgantown, albeit it's a small town, but we have within close proximity large urban areas such as Pittsburgh and Washington DC and Columbus and Cleveland and so on and so forth. So we've had several students do internships, at least in the photography area. Uh, one of which was uh, at National Geographic in Washington, D.C. Great. Which, incidentally, we're going to be taking a field trip there in, in the spring semester uh, with students. Uh, we've had students do internships at the Portrait Gallery at Smithsonian. Uh, I have a student right now doing a paid internship with a wedding photographer in Pittsburgh. Um, so they have those kinds of opportunities, you know, mm -hmm. being that mm -hmm. we are in the region we, we are in. Mm -hmm. um, other extracurricular activities? Well, I have to bring up the West Virginia Mountaineer Short Film Festival, which is something oh, yeah, that we yeah. started about four right. years ago. And, and uh, well, this, is, this will be the fourth year of the festival. Um, and we get uh, submissions from all over the world. Last year we had well over 200 submissions from over 40 different countries. Wow. Um, this is the only uh, international film festival in Morgantown. Yeah. Um, and it's an opportunity for our students. In fact, my students are required to submit, um, <laughs> and their work, you know, work is is yeah. is uh, is judged by a jury of of, um, of film practitioners and professionals mm -hmm. and critics. Um, not all of it gets accepted, of course, but but at least uh, they get every comments. Year, every year, a few mm -hmm. students uh, from WVU uh, mm -hmm. have their work up on the big screen, as it were, alongside these. Uh, independent filmmakers and animators from mm -hmm. all over the world mm -hmm. um, and it's a really great opportunity for them to you know get something on their resume get something started in a legitimate mm -hmm. venue mm -hmm. um, and also to see this amazing work that um, I think we have the benefit of seeing as a result of being part of this, you know, this mm -hmm. big university institution where we can do things like this so and I don't know if this is the right time to talk about this as well, but um, one of the, the greatest opportunities that we offer as a program is our, this new initiative called the Global Positioning Studies Initiative, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, or GPS. And um, so both Jerry and I offer courses outside of the classroom. I offer a 10-day photography workshop in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where I used to live. Jerry offers a, a multimedia workshop in Chile, Atacama, in the desert. Um, and these are four credit programs. Mm -hmm. I believe Jerry's is six minus three credits um, that are incredible learning yeah. opportunities. They're life changing experiences. And we truly believe in that um, mm -hmm. as, as a specific department and as a school, in that getting students outside the classroom, experiencing other places. Is, is really mm -hmm. important to their mm -hmm. development as, as artists and as individuals. So um, that's an opportunity that they can't pass up. Okay, let's, that sounds great. You know, yeah. I know we've had students go and just rave about, about those experiences and uh, those things are, are growing every year. Yeah. Um, let's talk real quick about students on the front end of becoming an art major. Mm -hmm. How should they prepare for becoming an art major in Intermedia, media, multimedia, or photography, mm -hmm. and then on the back end, what do they expect to do when they graduate from mm -hmm. WVU? Mm -hmm. Good so. question. Well, you know, I th I th as far as preparation, um, getting involved <laughs> in <laughs> getting involved in your high school uh, art mm -hmm. classes and yeah. doing a lot of work, I think we tend to get students who uh, have known for a while that they have something mm -hmm. that sets them something apart from some of their yeah, peers. Mm -hmm, yep. 
and um, and and this is the place for them. And um, I think it's it's important actually that students develop that sense of 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 being uh, having a unique kind of identity mm -hmm. as an artist mm -hmm. uh, early. And we try to cultivate that. You mentioned the artist voice, and that's something that we that we really try to um, uh, establish and and bring out of our students. Um, as far as graduation and what happens thereafter, I have students that are doing a whole range of things, yeah. um, working as graphic designers for big companies, uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, I have a student who started his own uh, company based upon uh, an idea about uh, graphics for t-shirts um, and a whole host of other mm -hmm. types of uh, yeah. postgraduate jobs. We got to wrap this up, Michael. But real quick, what some uh, of your well, students? we have students in graduate schools, you know, in, mm -hmm. in uh, across the nation. Uh, we also have students who've opened their own photo studios, very successful, and uh, and a number of other opportunities mm -hmm. in the in the Great. area. So, well, thanks, gentlemen, for coming on the show. Really yeah. appreciate it. So, I wish to thank our guests for coming on the show today, and please let me also thank the staff here at the Library Commission and Cultural Center for their work on this production and their efforts are, are much appreciated. I also want to thank you for watching and if you have any fur further information you'd like to have please contact the College of Creative Arts at WVU. Thank you so much.